It's time for the Jim and Terry Show. Hey, how you doing there, old Bob Cajun? <laughs> Way to take the cues, my friend. Good morning to you. I've, I've got a new configuration here, so I didn't know. I've got three screens in front of me. I put you in the middle, but I dialed you up on the left side, and I had to switch things over. Oh, I, can, I, I saw one of them flashing in the darkness there, but I wish I was there that I could see it to our wonderful audience. I'm still in Papua. Uh, had a rough night last night, so that's when I text you about, I don't know, one thirty or whatever it was. Whatever it was, I was blissfully unaware. <laughs> yeah, I had no bliss last night, oh, except, sorry when I had to get, except when I had to get up to do the Skype. <laughs> then the alarm well, you, went up. You never up. have to get up for anything, but... You know, I I want to make sure you know that you're never under any pressure to either show up in person or Skype or do anything. That's what we do. We just we're flexible. Well, I wanted to go in person, but uh, last night I, I'm not feeling too bad right now. Uh, but last night wasn't feeling too good. Yeah, I see you with your coffee mug, <laughs> so I'm just gonna go over and get mine. I'm I'm one minute behind you. You see? Oh, it's a time zone thing between here and Pefferla. It does. <laughs> <laughs> well, the sun does come up in Bob Cage and earlier than here, for sure. That's right, because I am east of you. Yeah, a, a, a whopping hour. Wow. <laughs> Maybe not quite an hour if you know what you're doing. That would make me in the eastern, um, the Newfoundland time zone, yeah, right? I'd, they half I'd an hour? Yeah, you're an hour from here, <laughs> so the sun rises up three seconds before it hits here. I always thought I was more illuminated than you, my friend. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> At a this stage this, this, of the game, I don't give a crap. <laughs> Lost all competitiveness. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I was going to open up with the Canada-U.S. semifinal. Yeah, yeah that was, uh, I can see, it was a good final. I, I, I can see why the... Uh, U.S. at a couple of points would say, what are you doing? Like, I have no fingernails it. left. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the, 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 the main game's tonight. Today. The gold medal game. Yeah. We'll have to check it out. I didn't think they'd play back-to-back -back like that. It's today. I, that's, um, like, ridiculous. It is. Especially considering the speed and intensity of that game. Yeah, it was amazing. Like the United States had two goals called back, so I'm glad Canada beat them by more than two. Yes, yeah. uh, that would have been controversial to say the least. But both calls, I thought, were well made. I, I guess Bobby. I was on the phone with Bobby for the last period. So <laughs> Bobby thought it. Well, he was obviously rooting for Canada. Don't get me wrong, but right. He remembers back in the day. He remembers my mother saying about Ferguson or something. He's sitting on Bauer. Get off Bauer. You know, so it was yep. a little bit uh, more. You could get away with more, I think, back in the day. Yes, you could. Back in the days of black and white TV, when everybody lived in a black and white world, the rules were quite different. There were no rules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, could, you could get away with anything. Pretty well, yeah. yeah. Since the days of the NHL Players Association, where people value injury and compensation for players' salaries if they get injured, it's a big difference when you interfere with a goaltender. Yeah, well, it was good. It was a good game to watch. Uh, I only watched the third period. Actually, oh. I, I watched. Uh, well, I didn't know it was on. Uh, I was probably sitting here feeling more sorry for myself, wondering when, when I was going to get better, and then so I watched one and a half periods. And I'm glad Look good. I did. It's a good thing you did because if you watch the first period, you were in for a bit of a rough ride. It looked like Canada was going to go down easy peasy to the United States. Yeah, they were losing 2 nothing. 2 nothing, but the the energy, the shots on goal was lopsided. It was like 10 to 0, zero shots in the first wow. maybe 10 to 15 minutes. The, wow. Canada was not even in the game. And what do you think happens? I don't know. There must be an extra gear that you and I have to find at this oh. stage in our lives, and we got to find out how to shift into that gear. The, the secret shift. 
the secret, secret gear. gear. Secret of the shift. Yeah. Oh, wow. I found it, Terry. I found it. You got a you got a title for a song or a album or a book or something, but whatever it is, let your mind run with it and maybe that'll carry you. Ah, yeah, you never know. Listen, I should tell you now before we go any further, even with my condition for those listening, I still have a well, I'm dizzy more than I've got vertigo now. It, oh. It's, yeah, it's so the vertical part seems to be gone. I'm just a little kind of stunned at, at, the, at times. Okay, no comments. No laughter, <laughs> no nothing. I will not. This is a pretty uh, unusual thing for you to feel this ill and uncertain. And in that, I booked two weeks in Mexico. Well, there, there would be people, some might even say, I might be one of them who'd say, what are you thinking? I know. I know. <laughs> Well, I got a good deal, so... Uh, a good I'm deal? Well, I... Just to let you Do you know, have health I, insurance? Oh, I'm getting it, yeah. Good. You, so you're not going to... I mean, flight cancellation insurance. Well, I... I no, probably not. Um, everything uh-huh. I got... Everything I got was at a fairly good price. Um, Except your health. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get better if it kills me. <laughs> oh, I love yeah. the witticisms. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I will get health insurance. Uh, um, I, no, flight I, cancellation I've been trying, insurance. I've been trying a couple of supplements, and I, I just decided last night to eliminate one of them because uh, I thought I was making greater improvement, and then I kind of slipped back a bit, and I'm wondering if it's the supplements because you know me, everything seems to work a little weird differently with me. Yeah, you live in the land down under where it's the opposites. Yeah, yeah, so I cut out one last night, so I'm just taking one, and I'll see how that goes for a couple of days. And if I don't like that, I'll cut it out too. It, well, it just, I, you know, I sure hope reverse. you feel better. It's supposed to give you energy and everything, and I'm slugging around like you wouldn't believe. So, you no, know, got it. And I want to get walking again. I want to get out there and walking. When Christine was here on the weekend, we went for a nice walk, and I liked how, it. But. And how did you do? You stayed on your feet. You didn't topple over. Yep, no, stayed on my feet. I was, I was a little tired. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know how far I walked. I don't know, a kilometer and a half or something, you know, but not an overabundance. And, uh, but I was glad it was over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyways, I said all that not to, I think I will be better. I just said that basically, number one, because it's funny, that's what I'm doing. And number two, to let you know, I'll be gone like from the 19th to the 3rd of February. So January 19th to the 3rd of February. Well, thank you very much for our ones and twos who are following. The Jim and Terry show will continue unless I come down with something. Nothing. You're coming down with Like a flight to Mexico or something. No, you're not coming down with anything. (laughs) Well, I've never kind of done that. Every year I've been saying I'm going to do it, and this year I said I'm going to do it. And you did it. And I did it, yeah. Very good. Well, you know, my feelings about travel and about getting together still at this point in time, having the bivalent vaccine and still masking, it's still uh, it's still out there. And uh, I would just be cautious. Wear a mask if you're on the the plane, you know, try to be safe, as safe as you can. Have you been checked out by your doctor? Just. Just on, the phone, just on the phone, talk to Okay, only a phone yeah. presence. Okay, yeah. is she able to diagnose anything over the phone? Well, she basically just said it, 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 it right now there's apparently almost a epidemic of uh, vertigo. Uh, I, I don't know why. It might be connected even with the, the, the shot. I don't know. I got four of my shots. I don't think so, but maybe. I don't care. I have no problem with there being side effects, you know, because everything has side effects. Some like some people get things. Well, let's let's just go with probably one of the more obvious ones is that it's a side effect of a COVID infection, Maybe. rather than a side effect of the vaccine. But I mean, Actually, anything, I, like I do not know. Yeah. So that 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 could be the other thing too. And I don't think my doctor said that. I don't think that's what she said. But she did say it's really, really going around this this vertigo and i i had it really bad as you, you know. did you got walloped yeah i got it really really bad and uh i'm i'm way better than that like I, quite frankly right now as i'm sitting here i probably could have driven to bob cage 
Um, I'm glad you didn't. The weather is atrocious. It's still dark outside. It's mm -hmm. still raining, and it's hovering around zero. So I would not want you to make that drive. Yeah. And that's that's good. We have Skype. Thank goodness for technology and two old farts who can still press a record button. I hope I pressed record. <laughs> well, when you said, "Are you there?" I thought, "Dang, Nabbit, it didn't ring or nothing." I, did I miss this? You know, but no, it was fine. No, I thought I would send a message first since you told me you you sent a message last week, and I thought, oh, it's on, he's sitting there on his phone. I'll send him a Skype message oh. before I offer the invitation. So yeah. yeah, I was just checking in, just checking in. I okay for our ones and twos. This is the Jim and Terry Show podcasting from the Hobbit Hole Studio and Bob Cajun and yes, the comfy couch in downtown Pefferlaw, the center of the universe. With my blankie. My with an hour blankie. time zone difference between Bob Cajun and Pepperla. I like that idea. Well, the time zone difference is <laughs> if you're driving. <laughs> and Bob Cajun, where the sun rises first. Three seconds faster than it does here. <laughs> I don't even know if it'd be three seconds. At 186,000 miles per second, I yeah. think it's a point zero 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 yeah, second. Yeah. <laughs> amazing that we know that kind of stuff. I, I was just watching some videos about you know the universe and junk like that and i'm just i'm so amazed that even where we're at now is is a human race knowing some of the things we know is it's, it's incredible to me well you know, let me let me requote you on know. that one quote this is jim sampson's morning curiosity i was just investigating the universe and stuff like that quote <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty bold claim <laughs> Yes, we were reading some things. Oh, I have a beautiful T-shirt. I, I was going to wear it for the podcast, but you wouldn't even see it anyway. You'd have to be in person. It's a serious-looking cat behind a desk that, with a bookshelf and a, and the coffee on the desk, and it says, "I I oh my gosh, I, the expression escapes me. I read books, I drink coffee, and I know some things." <laughs> And it's in one ornery looking cat looking over his cup. <laughs> my, yeah. my son my son got a coffee cup for Christmas that said <clears throat> from one of his children, world's greatest barter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have to live up to such great uh, expectations. <laughs> yes, that's our achievement. But mm -hmm. we do good in this world. You see, we take the attention off the young people. They got us to laugh at, you see. Well, they do. And I, I would like to think that the Jim and Terry show is a show full of laughs, whether it's misplaced words, uh, we get our tongues tangled and words mucked up and all the different things that make us human, the foibles of life. And we explore things and we have a laugh at most of the things that we encounter. Some things we talk about are fairly serious, but generally we are the Jim and Terry of CBC Broadcasting. Yeah, we just get together and have coffee is what we that's, do. That's what we do. It's like the hot stove in the old Maple Leafs lounge. Do you remember the hot stove? Yeah. Have you ever been there? I no. haven't. No. I never saw the set. But it was, yeah. you know, that's where they used to sit around the, the literal well, hot did they stove. Also, didn't they also have a restaurant, the hot stove? Or? No, I don't know. Oh, maybe, maybe I'm mistaking now, yeah. But that feels good in the winter, just that whole idea the hot stove well we had a fireplace in the, our fireplace for the first time in oh gosh since we discovered that it was a trigger for my daughter's asthma the smoke oh. particles so we haven't had it for years but because everybody was on deck we did it and we had it and out as a sample we did it a couple of nights before christmas just to see how it was going to go with my daughter and then we decided okay this is working out she did how not did have go? how did it go Oh, the visit was phenomenal. It oh, was nice to have a full house, air mattresses all over the place. It was. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I'm at the fire. How did how did uh, how did your daughter do? Oh, she went fine. She she did need her puffer, and that's why we have a rescue inhaler. Yeah. And uh, I could smell it myself. You know, it's it's different. It's like being in around a campfire. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's not a what do you call it? an airtight? It's not an airtight. It's an open hearth. We got to be thankful that we live in the time and age we do now because what would someone like that has those conditions have done 
150 years ago, you know. If you became aware of cause and effect, you would not go near, but you know what? I mean, most of these, our, our ancestors are from the UK. And uh, that's oh, that been wet, damp, and yeah. Well, the doctor told my mother when I was small and suffering from asthma that we needed to move to Arizona if you wanted to cure this thing. Whoa. Dry, hot climate. And get rid of the damp and cold. And you never did that. Oh, of course my family would never do that. Yeah, but that was the treatment. But what about you? Now well, you I've labored with it all my life, right? And I was told by a high school track and field coach that cross-country running was the best thing for me. Because I used to get sick notes. I couldn't do this activity or I couldn't do that activity because it would trigger an asthma attack. And he was the one who first taught me this idea of pushing through the asthma because literally if it doesn't kill you it will make you better and well you were there, a good squash player you know well, you, yeah. I, lots of times i forgot you had asthma there you go. a couple of times but. <laughs> <laughs> well there are a couple of times you and i showed up for god love us uh, what were we thinking a burger and fries on our way out of yeah. Uxbridge, and we <laughs> looked like we were both half tanked and you know oh, red I, face having to, uh, a coronary I remember going into an LCBO to pick up a bottle of wine or something. <laughs> going back. After a squash game. They stopped me at the door and I went uh, right away. And I just said, oh, I, look, guys, I just, I'm not drunk. I just played squash. Because you know how we'd be, yep. even after a shower, we just looked like blotches of red. And, you know, uh, anyways, I remember that. Those no, were the no, days. Guys, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days. Squash courts in Uxbridge, a time and a place. Sounds like another novel. Oh, we could get into this. Um, speaking of which, I, I want to follow up. Uh, not quite a novel. Well, I will start maybe using the word novel, and then I'll work back to the idea that you planted in my head. The novel Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. It's on Prime, uh, Amazon Prime. It's got three seasons. The third one was the third one was released, um, and I binge watched it. It was like a page turning thriller of a novel. Was it, eh? It's so uh, if you get a chance, Amazon Prime, Jack Ryan. I love it, and I love the fact that this guy from The Office with Steve Carroll. I I don't know what uh, Jack Kaczynski, John Kaczynski. Oh, I'm gonna get his name wrong. Anybody ones and twos recommend that Jack Ryan movie for you. It's three different world events, three plausible scenarios each season takes you to somewhere different in the world for a geopolitical bombshell of something. Wow, i got to watch it then. Jack Ryan, okay. Jack Ryan. Anyway, and that was I, just to say that's the novel. But then you put something in my mind called, it was a Brit Britcom. <laughs> it was a treason. Yeah, how did you like it? I loved it too. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was good, yeah. So there's a couple of things, speaking of novel ideas, <laughs> book yeah. writing. There's a, there's a beautiful one on Netflix, and I, I forget. It's something about the theme of the hills or something it's called. And it's a movie, and I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it, it had very little swearing in it, very little, no sex scenes. That's, that's something so rare these days. Yeah, and it takes place, like, in Ireland. And uh, it's just it, it was just a cute, stinking movie. I liked it. Interesting to keep your attention, too. It's, you know. I like the way you put words together. Cute, stinking movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How you get these phrases, I don't know. Um, well, chin, chin, chin. Cheers. Chin, chin. We have our Clint. coffee mugs. Yeah. Yep, silent air time as we sip. Our yeah, food. and I, I like that because sometimes silence is golden. Silence is golden, golden. Oh, my goodness. La -da 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 -da. Name the band in the year. Speaking of retro, we went down a documentary. I sent you the link, and you uh, apparently enjoyed it. The Ventures. Oh, yeah, I enjoyed that. It's sort of the original surfer kind of style of guitar playing. Yeah, I watched it all. I thought it was a very clever done uh, uh, documentary because truth be known, as I remember the ventures, you know, all of those hundred albums or whatever they put out, a lot of the music seemed repetitious to me, you know, 
And I noticed the way they did it in the documentary. You never even heard any full song of anything. No. Nope. But some of it was they, they did have a unique twang to it. Yes. And it was, uh, you know, it made you sort of thank God you're not in a rock band. Yes. I mean, look at the life they had. I mean, they, they when they went over to Japan, they went for, what, 79 days and did 200 and something concerts? Yes. I see it, or 150 concerts, I can't remember. It, it's not like, you know. They were bigger than the Beatles. Well, that's why the other thing, the Beatles went over there and did a concert. <laughs> mm -hmm. concert. So they went over and stayed for three months, you know, playing hundreds of hundreds of venues. Uh, but yeah, they outsold the Beatles there. They didn't outsell sell the Beatles in the world. They no, no, and that was probably Japan. just a certain time period, and you know, yes, but they did, and you can play with statistics like that. Mm -hmm. But it it was good that they were put into the. Uh, uh, installed in the Hall of Fame there, the Rock and mm -hmm. Roll Hall of Fame. Yes, amazing. So if you haven't checked it out, those of you who are of our vintage would probably know the name Ventures. If you are of Generation XYZ, um, probably you have not heard it. Worth checking out because the guitar style spawned a lot of bands and influenced a lot of big musicians. Yeah. And that was the other thing the documentary showed. Yes, it did. Yeah. Uh, Walk Don't Run for our listeners. If they don't know, look up Walk Don't Run. Very surfing type sound. I, I almost thought, I don't know if you did it. I was almost thinking, I got a couple of songs I could kind of maybe mimic that kind of sound to it. I was wondering if I should try it. You actually have a tone on your guitar in some of your songs that reminded me of the Ventures and your lead guitar sound. So yeah, it's there in us somewhere. I was thinking of their cover of Wipeout. Well, see, I mentioned that, and I was on uh, Skype yesterday with Gord, which I sent him the documentary, and he looked it up, and it, there's no record of them doing Wipeout. I said, I'm positive they said yeah. they did Wipeout. Yeah, they covered it. Yeah, and, they covered uh, it, yeah. They covered it. It's not their song. It was another group that made it, uh, that Walk recorded Don't it. Walk Run wasn't their song either. Yeah. So I think the statistics were something like they, they recorded over 3,000 songs. They wrote over 1,000 themselves, and uh, the rest of them were covers. Well, back in the day, I mean, even the Beatles' first uh, album, I think, was called Please, Please Me. Yes. And I think they wrote eight of the... 14 songs or something on that that the others were covers and bands did that to get going yeah that's what they did and and the beatles like the ventures did it their way and so the ventures would take popular songs that had words and they'd instrumental it you know and they'd do yeah. it that way yeah i wonder how that all works out in terms of uh, payments and royalties well, they got screwed over like everybody did back in the day. I mean, remember they were saying they learned the hard way to it's cash or nothing. Because mm. they get all the way home to bring their money to their wives and some of the checks were no good. And yep. some of the owners of establishments, that's what I found when I was full-time musician, are pretty, they're dinks. Yep. You know, some of them yep. really, really are not nice people. And they, yeah. they don't like the bands, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the music industry was fairly, and I, I was going to say fairly cutthroat then. Has it changed? I have zero idea. I mean, I think I think it would be hard to find a place. That there, at one time, see, back, I, I was in the time when the strippers really started coming into the to, uh, bars. bars and clubs and stuff like that. And many places I played, we'd share the stage with strippers. So not at the same time, but we'd do a set. A stripper would do a set. We'd Didn't the polls set. get in the way? <laughs> no polls, <clears throat> but uh, I mean, I guess it's easier to pay one person than have a whole band tearing down the walls with sound because the same old argument was all of the time yep. turned down. We'd always say if we turn down, the people are going to go home. Yeah, I mean, they want to hear this stuff and they want to hear it loud and powerful. Yeah, and we'd always win that argument the hard way. You know, eventually you turn down, and people would go home. So you say, if we keep it loud, they'll stay. So mm -hmm. they didn't. A lot of owners didn't like the bands, and I wish they would just go home. Leave it to your bartender or something. Go home. Get out yeah. of there. You know. Yeah. 
Well, you had your share of experiences doing the hard trail of uh, aspiring musicians in Canada doing the tour. Well, yeah, I mean, our first tour was, I think, three and a half months. That's a long time to leave your family. Yep. While you're rocking and rolling around the country, you know. Yeah. Tough on uh, musicians who are married and with young families. Hopefully you started that process before you got married and before you had kids. What process? The process of touring and being away for three and a half months. Well, that happened when I had one child and one on the way. That yeah, was that's what I mean. The toll out. is harder on musicians who are married with families. Oh, ab ab absolutely. And uh, yeah. I would send almost all of the money back home. And, uh, you know, eh, what can I say? I, I had the experience. You I did? I had the attitude attitude today back then because then uh, i might have enjoyed the tour a little bit more but i like anybody else wanted to go home you know see my family and and you'd get no sooner would you be home you'd be playing some dive in oshawa or someplace you know <laughs> oshawa spawned a lot a lot of big bands down in in the oshawa pub scene yeah, yeah. back in the 70s 80s even into the 90s there's a lot of uh, music coming out of oshawa yeah and uh, yeah, but what can I tell you? It uh, some of the places we played were not known as the no. best places to play. And, you know, no, uh, but I we was were gonna be stars. You understand? So that was yes, of pain. course. I'm glad you had that uh, that thing in your head where you believed and had confidence that you were going to make it. You were going to be one of those success stories, and here you are. You are a success, just not the success in the way that you thought. Yeah, or the way that I wanted, but when I see uh, documentaries like The Ventures, and I think of the price they paid, like the guy said one time they were on the road for a half a year, not yeah. seeing their families. Now, we didn't hear much about did those families survive, maybe not, you know what I mean? Right. Maybe That's maybe right. it just didn't work out, That's right. and the pay was such that you would do hundreds and hundreds of performances a year just to make a living. How many sets of guitar strings would you go through? Well, I liked what they got at the end there. They changed complete guitars a few times, not because they really genuinely liked the guitar, in my opinion, just my opinion. It's because the, those, they were sponsored by those guitars. Yeah, companies. there you go. Well, we've always talked about corporate sponsorship. So do you want a, a Zagger guitar? <laughs> oh, yeah, I would take one of them, but... I wouldn't mind one of those uh, Mustangs or Jaguar Fender Mustangs, yes, or Jaguars. Yes. You know, but they're up there at four, five thousand, six thousand dollars. Oh, Jim, how's your album sales going? <laughs> not, not bad, not bad. For a guy that hasn't even, because you know, I got I got the vertical, and I I ended up I, I haven't done anything to really push it, uh, and I I don't know how I'm going to push it anyways. I am very very pleased at the dynamics of people who are enjoying my cd and my, mm -hmm. my neighbor al plays it all the time it's right out all the time right there and uh and I, I you know my friend who she bought three cds to give to her friends at christmas and the reports coming back as they really really well one anyways came back you know really really like it have i have a feel of springsteen they think and i said well i was influenced by bruce springsteen yeah so it's it's there. How about you guys? You you got since I last talked to you, you got two more albums in the can. Or? Uh, not albums, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, one of the fellows, um, Kevin Gibbons. So here's a shout out to Kevin. Has lost the muse. You know that thing that drives you to yeah, write, yeah, to yeah. put pen to paper, to sit in your studio and plunk away on a guitar or press record just to do it. That yeah. when that leaves, it's a it's a dry spot. It's like a writer who goes the ink dries on the page. You got nothing, and yeah. it's a tough place to be. Well, I mean, you might be drained out. The well might be empty. Holy moly! The the amount of songs you guys you guys push out. I mean, I'm not there yet, but I've only got one album out. You've got like what, thirty? I don't know. <laughs> you got a lot. You got a lot. We, I think we've got a dozen. And the last album celebrating 10 years of Wigmore Allen Gibbons is a 27, 28 song collection. Wow. Yeah. See, that's a lot. You know, <clears throat> yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. But uh, it's just to say that 
Wigmore Allen Gibbons is going through a struggle at the time, so it might just be the W A for a little bit, where it's Wigmore and Allen. Keith oh. Allen is still engaged despite his eye problems. He's still going into the studio and still poinking away. So that's good, and we have an experiment underway right now. I'll play for you the results if you are able to be here, or I might send you the recording via MP3 file attachment, where I did a, a bass track, like a foundation, orches orchestrated, and uh, I took it one way with a melody and lyric, and I said, just out of curiosity, here it is. What are you going to do with it? And he took it somewhere else, and it's fascinating to hear the same bed track being interpreted differently. Yeah, and that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is kind of cool. And that's well, what I can, love. You can send it to me if you like. That'd be good. I do plan next time, next week to to make the journey. I like doing this in person other than mm. through Skype. But we're doing okay today considering all things. All things considered, we're doing well. Well, and, maybe and we will wrap it up with that note of that note, that musical note that says chin chin <laughs> and we'll talk to you in a moment and stir up some political observations oh, stay tuned folks. <laughs> stay tuned the jim and terry show signing off bye bye for now bye bye clink clink